Hi, in today's episode of Elise Radar, we're going to be checking out a budget gaming setup for under $1,200. So, before we take a look at the setup, let's take a look at the PC that's going to be powering everything. So, I put together a PC which was also featured in my last episode, so if you want to check that out, go ahead. It's a review of a budget ultrawide gaming monitor, but it's only $750, and it's a decent build that'll last you a couple years for 1080p gaming. And so, I'm going to explain to you why I chose the parts that I did. And so yeah, let's just go ahead and start out with the CPU. So I chose the AMD Ryzen 5 2600X because it's a 6-core processor. So if you wanted a game stream on the system, you have a CPU that has the cores to let you do that. So I will actually show you guys towards the end of this video an example of me streaming off the system as well. Next up is the ASRock B450M Pro 4 Micro ATX AM4 motherboard. This is a decent little motherboard. It does everything we need it to do. It's got room for RAM upgradability, and you could also put a capture card in the system underneath the GPU if you wanted to, which is actually how I have my system configured, but I'm not going to include the capture card in this uh, video. Next up, we have 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200 LPX Corsair Vengeance. The reason that I want fast memory is because we have AMD, and AMD loves its fast memory. And this motherboard has four RAM slots, so if you wanted to upgrade to more RAM down the line, you can. Now, we have a one terabyte... Uh, Western Digital hard drive just for mass storage and for our boot drive and a couple games that we probably will play the most like Overwatch or like if you wanted to have CSGO installed on an SSD you can with this Kingston A400 240 gigabyte SSD. For the graphics card we have the MSI GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. It's the 6 gigabyte and it's an amazing card. It's affordable and it's great for 1080p gaming. And then the case I chose is the Cooler Master Master Box Q300L Micro ATX Mini Tower Case. Um, cases don't really do much for performance. They do help with airflow. And this uh, case has nice airflow capabilities in it. So it's 45 bucks, and it's a nice little case. Looks cool, too. And then for the power supply, I chose a 550-watt power supply. Now, if you look at our estimated, uh, it's about 319 watts. But I put a little bit of a nicer power supply in there because... Power supplies are where things can go wrong. Um, I have a friend who had his system blow up because he didn't have enough wattage in his power supply to power his whole system after he upgraded it. So power supplies, you don't want to skimp out on those. You want to get something that you're comfortable with and that you know that will work. So here's what the entire setup looks like. Now the monitor that's going to be powering this setup is a MSI Optics 27-inch curved monitor at 144 hertz. It's 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution for this system. Pretty much this system could pretty much only do good performance gaming in 1080p. Maybe 2K, although I'm not going to test that out. And this is definitely not a system for 4K gaming. So let's really quickly talk peripherals. The headset that I'm using, which has a microphone built into it, and it can also plug in via a microphone and audio, audio jack, or USB is the Logitech. G430 7.1 surround sound gaming headset. Now this headset goes for about $50 on Amazon and it's about the same price you'll find it near local Walmart which is where I got mine and it's a decent headset. It's got some pretty accurate sounds location wise and it's the microphone doesn't sound amazing but um, it works for what it is so I'll give you guys a real quick test of what the microphone sounds like. So this is just a quick test of what the microphone on the Logitech G430 gaming headset sounds like. It's not going to be pretty compared to my Audio-Technica AT2020, but for the price, you get a headset with surround sound that's fairly comfortable and a decent mic built in. So this is what it sounds like, and this is pretty much what you're going to get. So next up, we have the keyboard that I chose for this setup. It's a little bit overkill, and it sets you back about $110 on Amazon, but it is the Cooler Master MK730 10 Keyless Gaming Mechanical Keyboard. Now, you can get it with brown switches, but mine has Cherry MX Blue. I like the clickiness. So, as I said, this keyboard's kind of overkill. It's full RGB and everything like that, so if you like your lights, you got those. But um, you spend a lot of time on a computer, especially if you're gaming, touching the keyboard, pressing those keys. So you want to make sure that that's comfortable and something that you don't even really think about when you're gaming. Because if you have a keyboard that's annoying or it kind of, it's hard to press down the keys or it's too easy to press down the keys, you know, you can screw up a lot of things. And so this keyboard is very comfortable and it's actually the same keyboard that I use on my current desktop. And 
The only difference between this one and my keyboard is that I have the MK750, so I have the one that is not 10 keyless. It's a very comfortable keyboard. Uh, it's very clicky if you get the Cherry MX Blues, but it's not so much clicky if you get the Browns. It's very comfortable to type with, and uh, it's just a good addition to the setup, in my opinion, because you spend a lot of time on a computer using the keyboard. The next and final peripheral that I'm going to talk about before getting into the games and benchmarks on this PC is the Steel Series Rival 110 Gaming Mouse. Now, this mouse has an incredible sensor on it. Uh, if you can't tell by some of the B-roll that I put up, I'm playing games on the setup on a folding table, and it doesn't necessarily have the smoothest of surfaces, but this mouse can just glide right over it. Some mice have problems with dealing with rough surfaces, but this mouse can handle it like it's no problem. So on Amazon, this thing will set you back about $30. It's rated five stars, actually. I picked this up at Walmart for $20 as well, so you might be able to find it cheaper out and about in your town. But this is a nice little mouse. It's a budget mouse. It has two buttons on the side, which are essential for me because I bind in every FPS I play. Mouse button 4 is reload, which is the one towards the bottom of the mouse, and the mouse button 5 is melee. And so actually you will see in my uh, Halo Master Chief Collection gameplay, which I do some benchmarking on for this build, um, my bindings aren't correct, and I'm not playing that well. So let's go ahead and show you guys the Halo the Master Chief Collection gameplay that I have here. Um, it's recorded in 1080p at an uncapped frame rate at the advanced graphical preset. Now Halo the Master Chief Collection is in a traditional PC port. You can't, or Halo Reach at least isn't, you can't individually tweak each graphic setting. So it has performance, original, and enhanced as your graphics options for this game. And we're playing on enhanced. So here is some uh, unedited, unfiltered, on anything gameplay of Halo the Master Chief Collection. I averaged at about 144 FPS. There was a couple frame drops here and there. Uh, this is in 1080p, as I've said before. And so let's just check out this gameplay. Attack the attack on sword face. Find out what we're dealing with. Roger that. We're in a strike team. Spartans, hostiles north. Let's knock some heads, Lieutenant. Next up, we're going to be testing out some Borderlands 3, so here are the graphic settings that I have saved. Now, unlike Halo the Master Chief Collection, Borderlands 3 has a built-in benchmark, so I'm going to be running that as with most games that are upcoming. So I'm going to run the benchmark and then I will show you guys some gameplay.
So that was the Borderlands 3 benchmark. So my average FPS was about 63.22 at the high settings preset. Now I could tweak some settings, turn some stuff down. This game looks amazing. And with the cell shading graphics that they use, you can turn some settings down without losing too much graphical fidelity. So if you want to get more FPS than just 63 on average, that's up to you. This game is actually surprisingly very demanding to run. But um, that was the simulated benchmark, so let's just go ahead and jump into some gameplay, and let's see how that looks like. So the next game that I'm going to be benchmarking is Counter-Strike GO. Now CSGO is one of the most popular esports titles in the world and this game runs like a breeze on this setup. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the um, gameplay that I have and then I'll just keep doing what I've been doing with putting the uh, FPS averages at the end of the video. So CSGO does have a built-in benchmark but I did not run it. So here is the gameplay of me playing CSGO. And really quickly before I forget, here are the settings that I'm using for Counter-Strike GO. And as you can tell by these uh, results, CSGO is a breeze to run. And that's actually going to do it for this video. And so I said at the beginning of the video that I was going to show you guys me streaming with this system, but my internet's not really agreeing with me right now, so I can't do that. But all of this gameplay was recorded on that system while playing those games on that system with my favorite recording software, NVIDIA Shadowplay. So if you built the system, you can record gameplay, you know, let's plays or whatever you want, like a breeze. So yeah, it's, this system's awesome. It's very affordable. This entire setup is under $1,200. The total cost for everything, $1,800. So yeah, that'll do it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the second ever episode of Release Radar. Um, comment, tell me what you think about the video, some things that you think I should change, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Adios. Thank <laughs> you.